Hello, hello, hello. Oh, so the channel in your Discord made me switch to push to talk, and I didn't fix that. So, <laughs> you should be able to hear me. Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, can you see the screen and everything? Okay. Yep, see everything. All right, cool. All right, so let's see what's going on for you in this game. So, uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's, let's get to the bottom of it. Also, that's cool that you and Eleven are practicing. So the, or, go ahead, sorry, what's up? The, uh, I was going to say, so, so the, the title of this, technically, the, like that I said, was um, help me make a timing or just suck less. Okay. Because um, I feel like I dove deep, realized too late that nope, that's not a thing. And essentially the same thing happened in our, our team games where I was like, I've got this. No, I don't got this. Yeah. And by the time I realize I can't win this fight, my army's dead. Yeah, for sure. Well, there's things that are going wrong for you already in this game. And that is, uh, especially if you're going to do a timing, you definitely don't want to fuck up your resource priorities. So basically, think about it. Like, let, me, let me explain the concept as to why it's important. You want to have every probe that you're having do something. You want it to be doing something. And you want to cut out its idle time as much as possible, right? So the fact that you have now chrono boosted your nexus is correct. But the fact that you've delayed your gas until the probe pops out is incorrect. And the reason why is because now you're going to be super far behind in your gas. Because now, the, the, I mean, you could still have a probe mining minerals with excess, which is going to give it some type of efficiency. But you're going to miss out already. with the, If you're going to build this gas right now off of, off of this probe popping out, you're already going to be behind by probably like 16 to 20 gas going forward in the game. And 16 to 20 gas and the start of the game is a huge deal for throwing down your initial tech and throwing down initial, initial buildings themselves. So it's just that's already a delay in itself that's so easily avoided. And the way you avoid it is you make your gateway right here so go back to right when you make your gateway right here right now and then you have a probe in the nexus and you can chrono right now you could chrono boost your probe in the nexus you could then build a gas and then build a probe right after you build the gas and you you will actually get that probe off right before the probe finishes and then you'll get a gas way faster so 16 gas rather than actually waiting for the 17 yeah and because you can still get the probe out in like uh on time it's not like it's going to be like off for two seconds and then you take a probe again. Uh, but having that gas sooner is going to allow you to go 16 out of 16 and then immediately go one out of three and it's actually mining. Because you can see like right now, this is exactly what I'm talking okay. about. Look at your minerals right now. You have 85 minerals in the bank and your probe just popped out and you have another one started, right? 85 is more than 75 and 75 is how much you need for a gas. So you can totally afford this earlier and it, it will... Uh, It'll, it'll, it, like, it would already be probably like seven to eight seconds in production already, like, right now. And then it'll be like probably like nine seconds in production by the time you started it right there. Or like, you actually waited for like just a second there, too, because you didn't build it immediately. That was like half a second where you waited. It's just a little bit behind where it doesn't need to be. That, like, this, these kinds of things are, if you ever have a timing that sucks dick and you're like, why can't I win? This kind of shit's why. It actually sets the pace to be slow. And this is where a lot of people don't realize, but like if you copy a build from like a pro and like, I'm not even saying that you did, but just in theory, if you did and you're like, all right, I saw this adept build that this guy does. I really like uh, zest does an adept build and I really like it. And you're like, but I'm doing his build, but mine never works, but his does. Maybe he's just like really good at micro. I don't understand. But then if you really look at it a lot of times, it'll be like, well, zest is doing his timing at like four minutes and 24 seconds. And you're doing yours at four minutes and 52 seconds. And if Zest did his at 452, it would look just like yours does, where it's way harder to make work. Because every second you give people to prepare for timings makes your timings fail work uh, more and more. If it makes it matter at all, I did not go into the match intending on doing a timing. Sure, that's fine. Um, but you should against Zerg, now, now, now that I've like gotten to the diamond point, I feel like if I just sit back and macro up for nine minutes mm -hmm. and I never actually bother the Zerg. I just feel like I'll never win because they have more money. Do you like me. to go sky toss at all? It is not something I have played around with enough. I, I would say uh, sky toss. For you the, will see that in sure. this match. For passive play, if the game ever goes passive, Perdos actually has the advantage with sky toss. 
And I would say you have the advantage until you start playing Zergs who are of the 5.5k MMR category. <laughs> like, most Zergs on ladder okay. will literally just die to it. And, like, it's actually... It is so fucking hard for Zerg to stop Skytoss if they're not adept in their micro. Like, really fucking efficient with it. It's really hard. And Skytoss is also really easy. You just literally... You kind of A-move it with Storms or something uh, with Archon. And you just watch Zerg melt. As long as you prepare it properly. <laughs> All right. My wall is. It's okay. It's I, I I don't mind your wall. <laughs> this map's kind of awkward to wall on. Uh, it's a bit short. If you if, to, just a, uh, uh, probably the best way I could say if you wanted to make your wall a little bit better would be, go to the outside and make your first building on the outside and then stretch it to the inside after rather than starting on the inside and then going outside. And the only reason why, is because, uh, the fact that your gateway is right here is taking away a lot of surface area that it could have had uh, because the gateway could have been like right here for instance and it could have walled off with two other buildings like right there if that makes sense okay this map is just awkward to wall on though it's it's got it, it there are some maps that have an awkwardly sized doorway where three buildings just don't perfectly fit it's kind of like a guesstimation of like okay uh, but you, and also you don't want to be like okay i'm gonna put my first gateway right there and then you're like fuck i'm short on this side and now there's a hole so if you start on the outside wall, where it's actually a diagonal and not a vertical, you can actually uh, then overlap the vertical a little bit if need be. You know what I mean? By like one grid or two grid or whatever, based on if you start the wall there, or if you start the wall there, or if you start the wall there, and then you can just overlap the the the, the vertical horizontal like di like the the corner location essentially. Diagonals way easier to wall off than uh, verticals and horizontals. The only way vertical horizontal is easy to wall is if it matches another vertical horizontal on the other side. Because those are the maps that it's like Some a straight movie. line. Yeah, exactly. You just make three in a line and then you're done. All right, so your scout was good. I don't mind it. I don't mind your scout. It was nice. You scout. You saw what's going on. I like that you're checking for a third. You see Lings now. You see a third getting ready to get set up. This is a humongous piece of info right here. This already automatically means that the Zerg is not doing some fucking like Roach Warren before hatchery type bullshit. He still could go Roach Warren after hatch if he wanted to or something really aggressive. But he's at least taking a third. So I would say you really want to make sure you confirm that if you uh, don't end up doing that. Let's, I'm going to watch you, Scott, for a sec. Also, that group tumor is a humongous sign as well. But <coughs> I'm surprised he let the probe sat there. Or I'm, I'm like he let the probe sit there while he threw that group tumor down because I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. Um, the creep tumor is a, like for as a Protoss player, you should think about this. Okay, if you ever see a Zerg make a creep tumor as a priority over a inject, that is not an all-in either. That is a Zerg player who is looking to establish map control that will lead towards more expansions and towards more defensive postures because that's what creep does for you it gives you more of a solid rounded defense it doesn't really do much for offense with creep tumor first because the creep is very negligible to say oh well this creep is going to make me get across the map like two milliseconds faster because i got to take two extra footsteps with it and then that's it like because it's so early right but obviously late game creep spread can be used for aggressive purposes once it's covering like 50 percent of the map or like 75 percent of the map then it's actually scary aggressively. Uh, but it definitely has defensive postures with the first creep tumor. So, because the, the trade-off is he's not flooding units right now because he doesn't have an inject anymore. So, <clears throat> this is huge. Uh, th th like, seeing information like this kind of tells you you don't need to do certain things and you can do other things. Like, here's an example. You don't need to chrono boost your gateway. You don't need to... Uh, so, you can chrono boost your, your nexus... You don't need to make an immediate battery. You can make it once you can afford it while slamming out probes first. Because if you, or like also units at your gateway at a standard pace. Um, you don't need, you don't really need to worry about getting attacked essentially. So all the defensive measures you would take, you can turn into a greedy measures essentially to make your build just flow better. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And then I would definitely say, so that was cool that you saw the creep tumor. That was nice. I'm surprised to let you see it. But you definitely want to go check the third. Because that reconfirms that it's not fucking weird. And it's not like he's actually proxying you. Okay, you, you confirmed it. Good job. Okay, now get the probe the fuck out. Get, out. get out of there with the probe. This probe was great scouting. But now it's a waste. So 
I would say the latest you should ever leave the probe at your opponent's base is as soon as your adept comes down. Or whatever unit you send out. Uh, or like as soon as you confirm, ah, third base is down. Just leave. Because you should either be scouting with hallucinated phoenixes or adept or whatever. And this probe could be mining. And this is, uh, again, it's just going to slow you down overall because this probe is kind of important. Uh, or what, what's up? Well, I was gonna say it's it's the small things that no, end up adding yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. It, like it's just no. It, like it is literally pointless for you to set to leave him here. I feel like the reason why you're leaving him here is because you're like just waiting to see when he takes a fourth base, but it doesn't mean anything at fourth this point base. because a fourth base gives yeah. you no info. It literally tells you nothing if he takes one right now or if he doesn't. It doesn't really mean shit uh, because he could be using it to be really greedy or he could be using it to be really aggressive. Like he could use it as a as a as a base of operations with macro larva like a macro hatch but it just happens to be at a fourth or he could just be making mass drones to take the fourth it doesn't really mean anything either way the only way you're going to find out what's going on now for real is by scouting into his base which is what your sentry's for so this literally serves no purpose now uh up to what you saw here though the setup that's huge that was great scouting for the setup and then i would say this was a good reaction the fact that you took uh a third base super fast i love it now, this is bad for a timing. So if you're going to do a timing, this makes no sense. But for the fact that you're reacting... Um, or go ahead. I was going to say, it wasn't originally. No, it, I, It's it, after I've, I've basically gone for the third that I'm like, okay, three base saturation, make army, see if I can kill him. Okay, or so okay, okay. I, I'm kind of missing... I'm, I'm, okay, so you and I have different terminology, and that's where we're getting confused. There's a little bit of loss in translation here. Uh... You're, you doing an attack is totally fine. I'm not opposed to you doing an attack. But you doing a timing... Like, if you're if, if the build was genuinely a timing build, it needs to be, like, a cut, clean build of, like, something that's going to hit a efficient time to hit. So, you are... A, I, would, I would say to... Uh, I mean, I'm not going to try to nitpick you here or anything like that. But for a terminology, I would just say this is just, like, an aggressive build for you. Or it's like, it's like a macro development into an attack. Because... If this were to be I a agree. yeah, if this were to be a timing, it would if, if that was like what you wanted on paper, I would be like, no, 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 this is so fucking wrong, because you're literally delaying your timing now by taking your economy, and it doesn't make any sense anymore for you, if you want to do a genuine timing that's gonna punish the zerg. But anyway, we'll move on. It's just we have the I understand where you're at. It was just kind of a loss of like I'm, I'm using the wrong word. No, you're you're totally fine. Like it, there are things like three base timings, but if you that's the thing, you'd need to say three base timing because if you just say timing, that usually means a two base thing. All in is kind of one base. Timing is usually two base. Three base timing is what you'd say for three base. Because timing would be like two base, yeah, like charge my, lots or some shit. My PVT is a blank stalker with the observer, which you saw that in the team game. My PvP yeah. is all over the place. Sure. Um, and PVZ is typically three base saturation, get a bunch of army, charge a lot of mortal archon, go see what I can do with it, and try to transition into a Stargate. Nice. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, you're totally fine. I'm not going to harp on the thing, the word anymore, or the terminology for it. Um, but so far, your build overall looks fine. The fact that you took a third base super fast, is uh, I love it for how greedy the Zerg was too. It's a great response. The only thing I don't like about it is your pylon placement is not the most ideal uh, for two reasons. Number one, if you have a recall to this base, you're going to trap your units if you put buildings here. And... Uh, Number two, you, you have a weaker pylon spread now to the left, which is the important one, because your pylons are so close to the front. So what I would have recommended you to do here is I would say I would have, have recommended you to put the pylon like maybe like not right against the nexus, but one pixel off or one grid spot off so you can stand in between. And then you can actually have a pylon field that's wide enough to go to the wall that can re reach to the nexus. Because right now, these pylons touch the nexus, so you can't tuck units between them. So the only way you can tuck units back is if you put them right there in this hallway. But then if you if you just leave it open the entire time, it's kind of... <coughs> it's kind of like... A bit... It, it's whatever. It's not the end of the world. But it just means it's going to be more annoying for you to get a proper like gateway wall-off going. And if you don't get a gateway wall-off going, and if you're not controlling the game like even if you are controlling the game it just opens you up to ling run buys i don't know how often you feel like you get hit by ling run buys in pvz but for me i fucking hate it i actually hate when lings and banes run to my mineral line and i'm like god damn it okay fucking now run the probes 
But if you have the wall connected to the Nexus, because you put a pylon in a way that allows your pylon field to do that, and you uh, you completely alleviate that from the outside, which is the the outside of the Nexus, it makes it so easy for your army to stand on the inside of where the Nexus is and defend. Okay. It just makes it to where you don't have to waste time. Alright, your probe just died. So that's all good. We knew it was coming. Your scout's coming in. Okay, let's talk about your scout for a second. This is huge. So I'm going to ask you a question. When, yeah. you, when you scout, what are you looking for normally? What are you thinking? Um, in Zerg, I want to know how many gases they're on. Okay. And I want to know how many bases they're on. And I want to see if and what tech buildings. Okay. What I expect to see if I'm basically safe at this point to just go ahead and drone the hell out. Or probe. God. No, you're all good. Um, I, I say it all the time, too. Yeah. So what, what I want to see at this moment is still just the one gas. I, I want to see drones, and basically we're coming up on six minutes. I want to see a fourth hatch. Okay. So I would say the easiest way you can scout Zerg is uh, the gas thing you said is totally fine. That's valid. The tech thing you said is totally fine. That's valid. Seeing what buildings they have, seeing if they have a layer or something like that, that's totally fine. Uh, it gives you an idea of where they're going to be at roughly with the unit comp. But a big thing to scout Zerg with is to scout drone count. Like, like literally, that's a, that's the biggest one of all. That's like the number one thing you should be looking at is how many drones are on the mineral line. And you should expect matching you, otherwise you're going to get all in. So, okay. because a Zerg right now, there is no way a Zerg can have like 72 drones to your 46. It's, or like 45. It's impossible. A Zerg doesn't get Queen Injects as fast as you get Chrono Boost. So generally what happens for Protoss versus Zerg is they kind of stay somewhat even... Because the Zerg falls behind initially because they're building their drones into buildings and also they have no queens. But then they start catching up when the queens start coming out to spawn injects on Larva. Um, and Zerg and Protoss, if the, especially if the Protoss continues to maintain uh, probe production with Gruno, you guys will honestly hit like up to upwards of around like 50 to 60 probes, roughly around the same number. Like you guys will balance out quite a bit. Because, again, it's it's all about the Zerg. Every time a Zerg builds a building, he loses a drone, even though he's building drones at a little bit of a faster pace when queens are out. But you also have a head start as Protoss because he's got no queen at the start. So it literally just it just kind of keeps kind of kind of level through the development process up to three bases. After three bases, yeah, Zerg will blow you away. Like, the Zerg will take a fourth base saturated way fucking faster than you if no one attacks each other. But up to three bases, you guys will definitely be similar. So if you scout his base and you go, okay, main should look like this. Natural should look like this, and third should look like this. And if they don't, every probe that doesn't exist, or sorry, every, see, I just did it too. Every drone that doesn't exist to every probe I have means that that's a unit that probably exists instead. Or he just is inefficiently playing the game. So we'll, we'll watch your scout now, and we'll see like you how you, if you give yourself the, abili the uh, ability, like this right here, way too far back. We'll see if you check it though. Yeah, like right there, you didn't scout any fucking drone line. That's rough for you. You can assume, maybe, but you don't really know. And that's scary. But I don't actually know. Yeah. Okay. And then as you go deeper to the third, you do see gases, though. And then as you go to the third, you can see uh, not only did two drones just spawn, but you see five drones on the third, and you see three probes on your natural. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's looking pretty similar. You can, again, if you assume that this is fully saturated, your guys' economies look very fucking similar, right? And this is how it the should feel. The gas on his natural makes me nervous. It's normal. Any time I see gas on that natural, it just makes me feel like I'm gonna get all in. It's 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 traffic. normal. It's normal. And the reason why it's normal is because this is not ZVT. In ZVT, you can get away with making a lot of queens and going for late gas and taking like all your six gases at once off of one gas. In ZVP, there's way too many things Protoss can do to kill Zerg. If the Zerg is just like going, I'm going queens and lings only. Like, Archon Drops will fucking murder you. Uh, DTs will murder you. Especially when they're combined with a Prism. Charge Lots will run your ass over. Uh, lot there, you know, uh, maybe not so much air, but like, Mass Adepts would fucking murder you. Like, there's so many things that would just fucking kill you as Zerg if you don't make a Roach Warren. So a Roach Warren for Zerg, just to throw it out there, should always, always be getting thrown down against Protoss if they're playing standard safe around 330 to like 350 that's just normal okay 
Uh, so yeah, don't don't read into it. And the fact that he has a Bane Nest and a Roach Warren is a little bit extreme. But don't read into it too much to go, oh my god, gas way too early. Because this is that's just kind of how it goes for Zerg. Zerg needs uh, gas a little bit faster against Burdos to make sure they don't... Because there's, there's so many two-base timings that will kill you if you don't have Roaches. Or Banes, okay. but Banes are kind of kind of shit for defense, so I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, their Banes are more... Uh, the th This would make me think maybe a little bit more aggressive. Like, maybe he's going to do Drop Lord and shit, or maybe he's going to be the kind of guy that tries to run Ling Bane in your middle line. Stuff like that, because that, that is usually a more aggressive structure in ZVP. This uh, Roach Warren, whatever the fuck it is, is definitely more of the defensive structure. And here's a huge sign, too. What if, you're, what if your Phoenix went like this? It, like, flew right through here. And then flew across, and you saw spines. Exactly, defensive posture, I know Zerg. He's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's so defensive. I to... <laughs> yeah, I don't really like the SimCity of your third. I'm not a fan. Uh, definitely make sure that these buildings aren't ex exposed. Uh, I would say, th now these ones, I don't really care about these ones on the right. The ones on the right aren't that bad because they're the interior of your base. But if you expose buildings like this on the exterior of your base, the only way this makes sense is if this is a base that is going to have like six cannons and like, or like eight cannons and like three batteries or four batteries. Like if it's literally just going to be, like if, if this was like your eighth base or like your sixth base and you're just putting cannon battery at it because you're like not wanting to always have to go back and defend it. And you're just making sure your bases stay alive. That's okay then. But if it's like a early base and you're making gateways anyways, put these back there, like off the grid by one. So like right there, or we like right there, for instance. And then you put those gateways you just made right here. These four gates. Get uh, you could put like gateway, 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 gateway. Or I mean, these would be back, so it would be more like gateway, 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 like all the way up against the side of the nexus, like that, up right above the rocks, against the wall, and you now have the same production that you have already, but you have it in a way that's going to guard your economy way fucking better. I hundred percent try to remember, and I will remember it. <laughs> probably <laughs> two sets of gateways after that one, where I'll be like, oh yeah, I never put gates in front of my third base. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I feel like all you need is a, a, a nice ass whooping to <laughs> make you remember. Like, <laughs> you need to play me a few times, and then I need to see this, that you're doing this, and I need to be doing a melee build, and I need to just kill your probes like seven times in a row in one game. And you'd be like, god oh. damn, this is fucking annoying. Okay, maybe I'll put gateways, because this sucks. <laughs> like, there's a lot of Zergs that play that way, too. Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing, too, right? He's making fucking yeah. Banes. So that's exactly what we talked about. This is an aggressive looking structure. This is the best thing he can hope for, for it from your side. He's like, ah, oh, nice. No defense on the Nexus. Now, if you don't send Zealots over there, your probes are so fucking compromised. Yeah, super lucky that I managed to uh, find that. Yeah. A mineral field. And I mean, it could happen again and again and again and again. It does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean that's that's good. I'm glad. Remember to to definitely cover yourself because it's it's just something that's such an easy fix for you that could help you in such in, a, in like it's like spending a little bit of time to think about your SimCity creates a solution to future problems. Okay, so you have double Robo and Robo Bay coming up. My tech is all over the place. Yeah. I would say I don't like it, uh, be only because you're kind of you're you're doing a robo priority right now, but you're doing it in a way where you did a gateway priority first, but you did nothing with it. It's like you're just you're just developing. So your build is I feel like your build's a little out of order. You need to kind of pick one or the other, um, and I would say double robo. I don't mind that you took a second robo. I'll say that right now, okay? I don't. This actually doesn't matter to me. I think you adding in the second robo later on is totally fine. I don't like how late you delayed your robo bay if you're actually going to use robo bay things. Uh, the only way this would make sense, in my opinion, would be if you're actually going to go for... Like, there's one of two ways this works, in my opinion. Number one, 
you just go for a gateway timing, which you did not do because you prioritize gateways first, and then you can fall back into like Colossus or Disruptors as like tier two and take like a fourth base with it or something like that. That would be okay. Or you could prioritize Robo Bay right away and go like really fucking fast, like Disruptors or Colossus, which is a little bit more scary for you against Zerg. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's more of a Terran thing, I would say. Um, but you could like maybe get something done with that, like use a warp prism and do something with that, be annoying, and then go into gateway explosion after, like a little bit of gateways opening and then ex gateway explode later. But you gateway exploding and then now double robo robo bay exploding while doing zero aggression here is your this. I'm gonna tell you right now. The reason why I don't like your build is because yes, this build could deal with a lot of things on the ground. But if this guy would would have gone for a spire, you would literally just lose the game. Like, you're, you're doing nothing to throttle the Zerg, and you're doing everything in a way that cannot handle Spire. Like, at all. Because uh, I, I, like, I, I... There just needs to be more of a assertiveness in your dis your decision. And the fact that you're going Charge the Arc and Immortal is totally fine. I would just say, delete these two buildings for now. Spend all those resources on making Archons. And immortals out of your existing robo. I love that you're kind of boosting your robo bay or your robo facility rather. And then I don't mind that you made a prism as well and just get aggressive with it if you're going to play that At way. This point, I'll say it's about this point that I had decided okay, I want to hit him. Okay, if I'm going to do this, I should make it line up with when plus one finishes. So, okay, so that was that if was you my if, thought. if you ever, I don't think no, I that's okay. If you ever think to yourself like. I'm just I'm just in the game. I'm just building, just building, just building. And nah, fuck it. Let's hit him now. If you ever think that way, you need to multi-prong. You need to not do one attack. Because this is going to suck pretty hard. Like, a Zerg player could be maxed out right now. I'm dead serious. Like, he could be maxed out oh, yeah. by the time you get across the map. And you would just run in and die. Because you've your build has done nothing to throttle the Zerg. And it's also done nothing to power you up either. This is not a power army. This is mostly Zealots with... Like, starting to make... It's like, if, if you do an attack right now, it's like an anti-timing. Because you just did a bunch of gateways to, st to start, but you didn't actually control the Zerg with those. And now you're starting to increase your power production, and you're going to push before it even kicks into effect. It'd be like saying you're going to throw down an expansion, and you're going to attack your opponent before it even has saturation. Like, it's just like an anti-timing for you. It's like not the, what you want to be doing. So, if you... And the, here's the thing. If you wanted to do the build the way you were doing it, you should have probably been attacking the Zerg by like six minutes. Honestly, like a lot sooner in the game. Uh, if you wanted to do a two base timing to Zerg, you probably should have been attacking him by like five minutes. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what Eleven ended up telling me. He's like, if you'd have showed up with what you had at about like six thirty, six forty-five. Yeah, no, for sure. You could have done. It's something because you did a gateway explosion. Late. That's why. It's your build explodes early, so you need to use that your advantage there. It'd be like the Zerg making a roach warren before fully saturated, and then making a bunch of roaches, and then sitting on them. That's kind of what you did to yourself, because although you were making probes still, you have allowed the Zerg to fortify himself in a way. Like I said before, you guys will keep up to each other around 50 to 60, but as soon as Zerg fourth base kicks on, you will get demolished, right? Just like you, you are right now. You are falling so far behind now in economy, because you're not throttling Zerg when you did a build that looked like it should have throttled him, because of how gateway heavy it was. You opened up with six gates uh, and a robo, so and a council, too. So that's and you got charged right away, so that's uh, that's definitely a build that needs to be more aggressive than you were. Um, okay. And then it, here's the thing: if I were to take over the game for you right now, okay, if I were to be like, all right, this is me playing now. I'm 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 in the driver's seat. Let's do this. What I would do if I were you is I would not attack with my main army at all. I would not attack with any of my archons. I would not attack with my immortals. I would scout with my. I would not attack with my stalkers. I would only attack with my zealots. And the way I would do it would be I would take my prism and I would fly over across the left side of the map. And this is not all of it, by the way. This is just this is a this is literally one of two parts of it. I would then take my existing zealots and I would go to the right side of the map. Send them to the other side. And then I would warp in zealots in his main at the same time as I did and attack with zealots over towards either this base if he owned it or this base that would be the next possible base. And I would hit him in two locations at once and try to break his economy. Now, while this is happening, I would not just sit there only remaking Zealots, and that's all I'm going to do. I would increase my supply on Immortal and Archon 
and I would be taking a fourth base while I'm at it because you can actually you could actually power yourself up to still win the game here it's just there's two reasons why I said what I just said okay number one the reason why I would take a fourth base why would I take a fourth here because you don't have enough power in your army right now you just don't you have fucking three immortals and you have one archon at the moment and it's not enough to push you need time if you want to actually push with a mortal archon and not just die you probably need to have like at least six of each minimum that's minimum ideally have like nine of each or something like that like a lot more and you could totally get there but it's going to take you some time and now if that's going to take you some time and your main base is also mining out you need some fucking money so if you just made your power defend a new expansion and set that up, you could repeatedly throw out waves of zealots at him, like I just said, and slow him down if he's failing at defending it. Like So for instance, another way you could do it is fly the prism here, warp in like eight zealots or like six zealots, have them attack this base, while once again you have a zealot wave attacking this base. And then at the same time, you could even do a three-prong attack where you warp in zealots there, take, take the like leave the zealots there, don't move them yet, prism back here, when your gateway cooldown is ready again, warp in another round of zealots here, then attack here to there, here to there, and like here to there and there. So you could like do a three prong attack and suddenly you might get some damage done. And if you get some damage done, you slow the Zerg down, you're going to have a high, higher chance of winning the game. And if the Zerg ever attacks you, the best chance you have of winning the game with your power is if it's backed up by battery and battery overcharge. So it just makes your power have a higher chance to win. And then you finally can take the push against Zerg once you have, like I said before, like the 9-9 nine, nine Archon Immortal comp, that can still be backed up by more Zealots and shit like that. But, yeah, like this this is an anti-timing for you if you push right now because this is no power. This is all gateway, no power, and you've missed the window for gateway to be effective to kill the Zerg. It can still harass the Zerg, but you can fucking not kill the Zerg with gateway anymore. Unless the Zerg is way below your skill level. Uh, because you're allowed, now allowing the Zerg to, to get to a point where he's fully completed economy and now he's fully pumping units and gateway will fall over to that. The only so way gateway, uh, go ahead, sorry. Only if it's before like seven minutes, you need to get you, gateway. And let me say it like this. There is one gateway unit that is always effective all game. And that is a hate Templar because he's got AOE and AOE is fucking nice. It's super effective. Every Protoss knows how good storm is against Zerg, but mm -hmm. gateway centric styles only work when the drone or when the zerg is in the drone phase because you're going to throttle his economy and potentially fuck him up pretty bad and if you over economies you're just going to kill him now if you wait until the zerg is done with his economy you don't throttle anything and zerg units scale better than gateway units especially when they're being made at a faster pace so like a bunch of zealots are going to do great if you're fighting like Eight, like 16 zealots versus like 7 roaches and like 8 lings the zerg is going to be like holy fuck this is scary 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 I'm gonna run drones run 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 oh drones are dying I'm making new units oh shit they're getting surrounded when they're spread out they're not able to group up this is bad and he's warping in more zealots this is annoying whereas if you have like 18 zealots running into like 20 hydras and 20 roaches the, the zerg will just like be a brick wall against your zealots your zealots will all just disappear and die and then the zerg will counter push you Okay. And if you have like a few immortal archon behind that, it doesn't matter because you're just going to get swarmed and overwhelmed. It's like a blob is going to consume you. So if, if you're going to so essentially, go ahead. Sorry. No, you go. It's okay. Um, I was to say, so essentially any of the zealots that I'm making while I'm building my immortals, while I'm building my, my archons, they're not actually doing me any good sitting at home. And they should be like, if I've got to wait on more gas, for example, and I make a round of zealots, they should be leaving my base and going to the left, to the right with the warp prism at the same time. Just something to buy time slash annoy my opponent. Just to make sure, you said your archons and immortals, right there, right? Or did you say zealots? Yeah, so, so I, my zealots. Okay, cool. My zealots. Yeah. I was going to say. So, it, so it, like. Okay, go, go. I was say, so building the Immortals, building the Archons, but, like, let's say my gas is low for just a minute, but I've still got five gates that are off cooldown. Yeah. I warp in five zealots. Yep. Rather than letting them sit at home... Yes. ...get them across. They're the fucking useless now. They're, like, the point I'm trying to make, I'm glad you... Yeah, correct. Your zealots right now 
are god awful. They fucking suck. And the more of them that you make, the worse you're gonna have a fight. This is like a Zerg who would be making nothing but Zerglings, and you have like imagine a Zerg who has like ten Hydras, and then he has like fifty Zerglings, and then you ha you have like six Archons already and a bunch of Zealots, and then you the Zerg just keeps making Lings and keeps making Lings and keeps making Lings. And then now you have like 10 Archons and like 30 Zealots or something like that. And the Zerglings run in and then all of them run in and just die. That's essentially what you're doing to yourself in the reverse. Because Zealots okay. only win when you swarm and overwhelm. And they will never do that at this point in the game because you're actually going to start getting outmaxed. The Zerg is actually going to overpower your supply over the other way around. And the way gateways built, the gateway pressure builds like charge lot builds are supposed to work is you are supposed to have a higher army supply than Zerg initially there when you take the fight that is the best case scenario for you so even if the zerg's army supply says it's like 30 and yours is like 30 or 28 and you're like well that doesn't buy i'm still down by two how does this make sense if the zerg is making them in eggs and they're not actually there yet you actually fight it in clumps rather than all together so you actually are taking like 30 supply versus six versus eight versus six versus six because it's coming out of different hatcheries all the time and it's not actually combined yet so it overpowers the Zerg. So that's, that's, and that's why it needs to be much. If that was like a two base timing, it would be like five minutes. And if you go back to five minutes in this game, the Zerg is probably being super fucking greedy off of a little bit of units with as many drones as he has right now. So uh, that's where that would come into play. So you, you're literally just, again, you're missing your timings like crazy. You're, you really don't have one to attack to realistically, but you, that doesn't mean you can't attack him at all. It means you can't attack with your whole army. If you attack with your whole army, you're going to throw the game. But you still can harass and buy time, and you can throw minerals into the into him and try to trade as best as possible by killing drones or hatcheries or whatever. And then it allows you to buy time to mine more minerals, which are very replaceable, and mine gas to then make better units with. Okay. But I'm still waiting on high Truthfully, you do not have to watch this past the point that I throw this army away. Oh, I know, I know you're gonna die. A hundred percent. I don't see this working. <laughs> Um, yeah, because I, I only stay in the game because it's, I was like, okay, maybe, like, I'll try this thing. Yeah, well, look at the supply. Look at, this is the problem for you is, look at the supply now. This is exactly why you're going to lose. This is the Zerg has now a 30 supply lead over you, and it's only going to happen deeper than that because the Zerg is going to, he's going to develop a bank faster than you the entire time you guys fight from now on because you didn't, you're not prioritizing your fourth enough, and you're also not throttling him enough. You're like in a middle like uh, limbo area where you're kind of just floating around, not really getting the best of either world here. You're not getting the best of your economy. You're not getting the best of your aggression, but you're doing both. Like you're half-assing both of them more or less. And then your army takes the fight. You got a couple of decent storms there, but now your army dies, right? And now Zerg has no, no longer a 30 supply lead. He now has a 50 supply lead. And it's because, again, the Zerg is mining at a, Like, if you look at the top left here, he's mining about 700 minerals more than you a minute. And he's mining about 300 more gas than you a minute. So he's literally just be able, able to afford more shit than you every minute. So you will overall get outnumbered with remaxes and rema like over, remax after remax. The, re, the reinforcement cycles will just be in his advantage. So the only way you win the game now is if you fix this difference, you get your probe count fixed like to 80, and you start going into power units and turtle the fuck up and hope that you can hold now what he can do to you, which is now his form of aggression. And you can always throw like zealot counters and shit at him still, even now, because it's such a minor investment that can maybe get you such big returns, like 500 minerals to maybe kill a hatchery and like a bunch of drones if the Zerg just doesn't react to it properly. Uh... But yeah, just if you if you like were to move out on the map again and take another fight, you're absolutely gonna die. You don't have enough power in your army to. For the, the again, the, the biggest thing I'm trying to explain here is, is for the amount of time you're taking, you have nowhere near enough power in your army that you need. And gateway, other than Templar tech, is not power. It's just fucking not. It's literally fodder. It's it's like filler units. The only way gateway units win is if you have an overwhelming supply in favor of you. Yeah, you're pushing again right now, it looks like. 
And this is another thing I said earlier too. That this is I'll say it. I'll, re I'll reference it one more time again. This build would get so fucking murdered by Aspire. <laughs> Your build is very sketch. Uh, about that. So I would say, if, uh, like, you need to definitely, I would say, maybe scout the Zerg's base a bit more if you're not getting the damage done that you're looking for, just to make sure you're not going to get counter tech switched on and be like, oh, fuck, 20 meters just flew over me, and I'm dead now. Also, another thing to say, too, is this army actually sucks against lurkers, and you're actually already playing against lurkers. Uh, if you're playing against lurkers, immortals are more than enough. Like you actually pounded the lurkers there a minute ago, but now I actually didn't know until Sunday night. Um, I was under the impression that with the Colossi upgrade that you could outrange. Yeah, no. And I found out otherwise Sunday yeah. night. Ten range, ten range, Ola. And remember, keep in mind too, this wall. I would, I, just, I know we talked about earlier, and it's this is like an attempt at a wall. Make sure you wall with gateways only because these buildings are so squishy otherwise. Like these other buildings are so fucking squishy. And make sure you don't leave this open ever either. Because they're gonna literally run behind Neuralite and go through with Banelings and just kill all your probes. So make sure you basically wall one side off completely. Yeah, you literally put a just like you do here. You put a gateway against the fucking wall of the map. Not the rocks, the map. Because you can kill the rocks and do the same fucking thing again. Uh, and then you connect it to the Nexus. And you over, you wanna overlap the Nexus about fifty percent. Because if you just do a barely overlap on the Nexus, Nexus are kind of tricky. The same with command centers and hatcheries. Even if there's a tiny bit of overlap, yeah. units can still fit through that. But if you go 50%, you'll guaranteed no have no hole in the wall, essentially. To where Banelings can't just be like, cool, I'm rolling through that and going in this way again and blowing everything up. The base is under attack. And now all those probes just got fucked. And still in the game? An upgrade's been completed. Yeah, it's just, yeah, your army will never beat Lurkers. You have, like, all melee and then Colossus. Colossus are bad and Zealots are actually fucking god-awful here. I think you're in the position, and now you're going Carriers, which is nice. But you, do you have upgrades for them at all started? You do. Okay, good. You're going on level 2 already. At, uh, about to finish level, or you're halfway, almost halfway to level 2. But now, I would, if you're going to do this, same exact thing I said a second ago. Expand. Play defensive. Make Carriers. Attack with Zealots. Use them as time-buying fodder that you don't want to just throw to death and be like, run across the map diagonally and go die. You want to run across the map around the edges, like be a ninja about it, and try to kill economy as much as possible and try to time it to where it's like multiple bases get hit at the same time. So you actually increase your chances to kill economy. And you increase your chances to make him play defensive. But if you actually got to a point where you had 3-3 three, three carrier, or like rather just level 3 weapon carrier, uh, you could, and you have, let's say you also have like 12 of them or like 14 of them, you could totally win this game. Um, but if you push the, the map right now with like two carriers, you're not going to win shit. You're going to die. You're going to throw this army in the, in the trash again because what will happen is, is all your zealots will die to the lurker and then all of his hydras and also your colossus might even die to the lurker and then his hydras will have no blocker and they'll run at your carriers and just pop your carriers because you only have two of them. There's not actually enough to really have the carriers be standalone here. So this is not the time to attack for sure. This is very scary. If you ever moved out with like this far, you should have the intention to recall immediately if you ever get caught, because this is death for you. Upgrade. Now, does he have lurker upgrades? Yet, he does. Does he have the other one? He does. So I would say that he's playing it a little bit awkward for himself the fact that he has his hydras in the front of the lurker makes no sense for him because he's actually losing his ability to use hydras here lurkers can literally sit in the front and kill all the zealots and then you can push forward after uh so you're kind of lucky right now like this shouldn't work at all but you're getting a little no. you're getting a little bit lucky that he's literally letting his hydras die i felt super confident right yeah, you should. And uh, you shouldn't. This is one thing that I, this. I want you to know that even though you won, you should have lost here. If a Zerg yeah. played proper, you should have gotten punished there. I will be sure to let him know. <laughs> if he is not watching, yeah, well, it's just all he had to do is just not stand in front of the lurkers, and then you would have been fucked. Um, now he's going corruptor though, and again, same thing. This is a perfect Crowder. perfect switch by him because he's going spire, and your build cannot deal with the spire right now. Now, not only could it not deal with mutas before, 
It could somewhat deal with Mutas a little bit more now because carriers are decent against Muta. It's, and when you get to a large number carrier, they're amazing against Muta. But he has way more Corruptor Supply now and a tech switch than you have in Carrier currently. And all of this means all your Colossus are also going to die. And then if you look at the economy uh, per minute, he can afford this at a way better rate than you can, even better than before. Because before it was only 700, 300 difference. Now it's 900 and 1,000 difference. So it's 1,900 in total difference of, of resources a minute here. And it's because you're, you're, this base died. It got fucked. Uh, you don't have any other bases beyond this. The Zerg's already got all the entire bottom side. He's got six bases in total. Or, sorry, seven bases in total. Because he just took this one too, even though it's not mining yet. Uh, so this is fucking brutal for you, right? Uh, this is actually fucking scary. And the only way you would deal with this now is if you had Archons and maybe even a couple Templar mixed with your carrier. And you just don't have time for that. The way you could have had time for that is if you played defensive and gave yourself some time to do that. Because again, if you're gonna go power, you need to play macro, you need to expand, you need to defend those expansions and build power. You don't push with power, it makes no sense. If you're gonna push, you play something a little bit lighter, like gateway heavy, but you play defensive with gateway heavy, which makes no sense. You still have a chance to win, but yeah, he's smart. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I, I built the archons and he made broods. About the time of, yeah, he makes the broods. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a normal it's a normal transition, right? Because he's going spire so heavy now, anyways. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you just don't have enough time. Like you could have you could have avoided this from happening if you just didn't push. If instead you once again pushed with like zealots and you killed this base and you killed this base, and let's say the zerg defended every other base, and you're like, cool. And now you have, uh, like, while he's defending, let's say he kills these zealots first after they kill this base, but he doesn't see your prism that's right there. And then he goes over here and deals with zealots over here. And as he kills zealots that just killed this base, your zealots get into the main. And then what if you actually kill the spires? Or what if you kill the hive? Or what if you just kill more of the base, essentially? Like, that could be huge. Uh, he, he actually has a good defense here, though. So you'd have to, that's something you'd have to work over over time. But. Yeah, yeah. he said that he was worried I was going to actually. Uh throw zealots in his main that's what you should have been like, doing for well, sure i completely forget that i even have war prisms yeah. to and you could you could even drive you can even fly it behind on the side and go around this way and prism like right there and go for the natural you could do you could do a lot of things with prism to be annoying as fuck but then as soon as obviously spire comes out it's going to be much harder because you can just fly and kill it right uh so but again that, like we're talking about 60 minutes in the game when you could have been doing this stuff a long time ago <laughs> And then you're gonna push. You're pushing out again. You're getting aggressively postured, with nothing really. Again, this is not right now. This is not power for you. This is suicide for you. Yeah, you're dead. You're gonna die if you push. Um. So for the record, <coughs> that mothership. Yeah. I thought it canceled it. It's okay. I mean, I think a mothership's great. I actually like it a lot. Uh, I think it's a good. Well, um, later on in the match, like a few seconds. Before from where we're at right now, I actually look over at my third base and I'm like, where did the mothership go that I was building? Oh, yeah. Oh, I must have canceled it. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. and I moved on. I never realized that it ended up dying. Just suicided yeah. into. Just the, make uh, sure, though, brothers. that you never push out like that. That just makes it makes no sense to push when you have no power, when you're going power. It'd be like, it's literally like, um, like you're investing only like 10% of your strength into an attack when you could invest 100%. Because okay. your army, if you go power, arm, units that scale really powerfully, which is why they're called power, because they cost a fuckload, but they take a long time to develop. These units exponentially scale in power. It's not like, oh, well, two carriers is the power of two carriers, and five carriers is the power of five carriers. Uh, or rather, that's, it, I'm not going to say it that way, because that's going to be weird. Let me say it like this. This will make more sense. I'll just And these are not going to be exact numbers. Let's just say that uh, a carrier costs 500 resources, okay? Like, even though it doesn't, let's just say it does. So one carrier is worth 500 resources. Two carriers are worth 1,000 resources. Three carriers are worth 1,500 resources. 10 carriers are worth 5,000 resources. It's not all really like that. Like 10 carriers is not really worth 5,000, even though it costs 5,000. 10 carriers is like actually that. worth like maybe like 7,000 because it grows in power exponentially because the damage output is fucking insane when it, there's a lot of them. And then like 20 carriers is not worth 10,000. It's worth probably like 16,000. 
because the damage output is fucking insane. It exponentially gets higher and higher and higher the more you have. It's a unit that deletes shit before it dies. It, like, it, like, the more DPS you have, the faster you delete DPS from your opponent, essentially. And a carrier, like a power unit, is a unit that can delete shit before it connects. Like, here's another, an, another really easy example a lot of people understand is, is think about a siege tank. A siege tank is definitely an expensive unit for the supply it costs. It's a three supply unit and it costs a fuckload. Now, think about, like, roaches. And imagine a tank versus roach army when you have, like, uh, both players have 30 supply invested. The roaches, I guarantee, in 30 supply will make contact and maybe kill a couple tanks. But then, uh, you know, the tanks will still win. And then that'll be that. The, like, some of the tanks might die, but most of the tanks will stay alive and win. But now think about, like, two tanks versus, like, three roaches. If three roaches just walk spread out onto the tanks in dead zone, the three roaches actually win there. So, like, the cheaper unit actually wins because the power's not scaled up enough yet. Because tanks can't kill everything fast enough because the DPS isn't enough to overpower everything yet. It's not scaled enough. But now think about, like, a 200 army supply tank army versus a 200 army supply roach army. I guarantee not even, like, one roach would connect. Every roach would die before making a connection to the tank because it's too much fucking raw damage out of those tanks that is always just blasting everything. And then... The roaches would get the the more supply there is, the more massacred the roaches would get, even if the supplies are equal. Because the roaches don't scale exponentially because they're not expensive units, but the tanks do, and that's how every unit in this game works. The more expensive a unit is, the more it scales with more power involved with it. So you never want to make a little bit of power and then push. The only time that would ever make sense is if your opponent just did something really fucking bad and he just kind of like threw the game in the trash and you go for a counter attack because he has nothing right now that's the only time you'd ever do that because there's nothing to defend him now and you can just take advantage of that you know what i mean makes sense okay nice but yeah you're you're definitely losing this game through just repeated pushes when you don't have the advantage and you just aren't ever allowing yourself to build up the power Attempting to be aggressive but not doing it correctly. Yeah, like you're, you can still, you can still push with a little bit of power units, but again, that's where like a timing comes in. And if you wanted to go for like an immortal timing, prioritizing the robo first and getting like a set like three immortals, and you fucking go and you back it up with like warp prism gateway. That's a fine build. That does that. That's totally fine. But like if you're not gonna push with a set timer and you're gonna wait and wait and take a third base and chill. And then you're gonna just you're gonna oh, you make a ton of other shit, and you're not gonna develop your power really fast. It's not time to push anymore. Now it's time to harass and defensively guard your economy. So you need to understand the difference of mobility and power to make sure your army is being used correctly. And this is the problem a lot of people have, I would say, in StarCraft, because a lot of people do exactly this kind of shit, where they just take a fight that makes no sense and they lose, and they're like, wait, what? Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't, and it should never work versus someone who understands the concepts of power and mobility if you're doing it wrong essentially okay so is there anything about what i just said that makes no sense or is you're like confused no. on no. okay no i actually like the the moment you were talking about it with the immortals and the uh the archons archons in the beginning part it's like yeah later on in this match i'm like trying to attack with two or three carriers instead of just okay throw down my shield batteries stay at home protect my ego get a actual all worth of carrier going yeah then try to do something instead of actively trying to engage with the stuff bunch of stuff that i don't have to yeah only take the fight that my opponent forces me to make until i have all my power units. yep like right there definitely not be pushing forward the fact that you push forward a tad is okay but when you overcommitted and chased them even further away from batteries and you like dove on the corruptor and broodlord that's super fucking oh like overcommitted your army is actually growing to a point of decent amounts of power but you're still so far under what you could be you're still like at half power of what you should be at so you're actually giving the zerg a chance to whittle you down so that you'll always be here forever once again so it, it like you should the, the closer you are to maxed out with real units not zealots the more assertive you should feel about being able to be aggressive and this is not even close so this should definitely be a i can poke you when you touch my base but then i need to 
make sure I zone I you and like defend my base. So you did, you did back up, which I liked, but you end up losing like two carriers for that. And now you make zealots, and if these don't, okay, these better counterattack. I hope they do. It looks like they are, which is super nice. The Zerg is kind of like predicting it though, which is unfortunate. That's just kind of luck right there. I would say if your zealots would have left, that would have just happened to have been better. Uh, just again, that was just kind of lucky. I don't think he predicted that. I don't even think he saw the zealots. At this point, I realize the last stand is going to be between uh, me and this new base. Yeah, I'm if, trying if, to take a base on the yeah. other side, but if this one dies, I'm dead. You definitely need to defend this base, not attack this base right now, for sure. Also, if you have a problem with uh, Parasitic Bomb, carriers are humongous units. You can definitely see the one that's glowing yellow and click it and drag it out. Or you can just hit on it really quick if you just back up and then hit S on your carriers. All the carriers that are not being bombed will fly away from the carrier that is bombed because it'll be like, we're under attack, but it's by invisible shit and the carriers will just move themselves away. Really? Yeah, but if you if you hit S like now though, it won't do shit because you're in combat still. They'll just sit there. They're, they're in combat, yeah. Yeah, I was doing okay with it when it was at the, the forward base, but once I got over here, I was like, eh. Yeah, so. Yeah, well, if you just follow the methods of mobility and power, you'll definitely have a lot more success. Uh, for sure. Like, make sure your build makes sense for all the things we talked about. And then I'll, I'll make, again, I'll, I'll just make this a VOD for you. I'll actually upload. I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Do you want me to upload the entire 2v2 plus this, or do you want me just to upload the coaching part? It's up to you. Uh, I mean, the coaching part of it is what I know that I will rewatch. Okay. I'll just do that part. Um, aside then. from that, I was just enjoying having some fun playing some. Yeah, games. no, me too. It was good. It was a good time. I'll I'll go back tonight and uh, edit out and upload this coaching part then, and then I'll uh, I'll link it to you in chat by like tomorrow. Um, okay. No rush. But any final questions about anything? No. Um, I think that pretty much did it. All right, man. Well, uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for hanging out and doing some two v twos, and also uh, thanks for doing a coaching lesson. And hey, yeah, thank you. Yo, and have a good time on the mountaintop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go back to work now. All right. I think it finally stopped raining. All right. So have a good night. Enjoy your stream. Thanks, man. Take it easy. All right, guys. That has been a uh, coaching lesson uh, with Machabe. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, this helps make sense of things for you guys as well. But I will see you guys in the next video, whatever that may be. And until then, good luck in your own games, and I will, I'll see you. Peace, guys. Thanks for watching.